don't mind if I move some furniture before I start. Let me get my bar out of the way. It could get exciting. <laughs> well, good to see you folks. This, did you say good morning? Yeah. Not 
turned on about something, our energy level automatically lifts. You know, most of us, at one time in our lives or another, have been around people who are filled with enthusiasm. And when we're around them, have you noticed? We can feel it. Have you noticed that? If somebody comes in the room that's charged up and enthusiastic about life, just being in their presence, we notice, we can feel it energetically that they are enthusiastic about life. And Norman Vincent Peale had this to say about it. He said, if you have zest and enthusiasm, you attract zest and enthusiasm. Life does give back in kind. So if we want more enthusiastic people in our lives, if we want more excitement in our lives, it's going to be up to us. We're going to have to be enthusiastic about life. Have you ever seen this motivational plaque that reads, Life is a do-it-yourself project. Get excited about it. You know, we can't wait around for somebody to make us excited. We're going to have to do it ourselves. And I love that expression because it reminds me that it's up to me to make each day a special day, if that's what I want it to be. Now, that doesn't mean each moment of our day is going to be wonderfully smooth. It's going to be uneventful. It's going to be happy. Life can be challenging. Life has challenges. But it does mean that we are able to take action each day to make sure that I'm excited, that you're excited, if that is your choice. I'm excited to be in life. I'm excited to be in this body and being alive. That's the beginning thing that we can be excited about. Now, I know there's some of us out there today who maybe are not as excited about life as maybe you'd like to be. But you know what? It's okay. Because, guess what? You don't have to be stuck there. You do not have to be stuck anywhere in consciousness, including those days when we don't feel very excited, when maybe our energy level isn't as high as we'd like it to be. We can actually learn on those days how to become inspired. How to become energized, how to get fully engaged in a life of possibilities, gain excitement. It isn't so much about working to fix ourselves, it is learning ways to accept ourselves, to focus on those activities in life that have personal meaning for us. So we're not stuck, there are some things we can do. Step number one, stop the drum. <laughs> that deserve a round of applause? <laughs> I had no idea you knew what I was talking about. <laughs> you know, just learning to accept things the way they are. You know, when things get tough, it's easy to fall into that worry trap. We worry about this, and we worry about that. We keep picking at the problem and <coughs> conjuring up worst-case scenarios about what's going to happen. Well, we don't have to do that. We can quit focusing on the problem and the fear and the upset. Acceptance of the situation allows our minds to stop flailing about and we begin to see the situation in a new light. Just by accepting it, things begin to shift. You know, whatever we resist persists, but acceptance changes the dynamic of our life experience. We don't have to have a particular challenge seen as bad or wrong or that for some whatever reason you're being punished and that's why you're in this situation. None of that applies. <clears throat> Discover that there is something to gain in every experience. We just have to look for it. It's there. 
Number two, look at your emotional flow. Life is not about the absence of emotion. It just isn't. We're emotional beings. Now I have some macho friends who would want to disagree with that. They've got it all together. Nothing bothers them. But for the rest of us, when we allow ourselves to get excited about being in life, whether it's joy or whether it's sorrow, did you know that we could hold joy and sorrow in a container at the same time? They're not mutually exclusive. We can be joyful and we can be sorry. Life is multi-dimensional. Both are possible and they can occur at the same time. So, it's easy to resist wanting to get uncomfortable. Anybody ever notice that? But I don't want to get into my feelings. It, I'm angry or I'm real sad. And I'd rather just not go there. But you know what? You've heard me say it earlier. Whatever we resist, persists. When we're able to express our anger and be with it, when we can be sad, <coughs> those emotions don't get stuck. They flow in us and through us. It's a healthy way to be. Number three, your door saying this all the time. Breathe. Breathe. Conscious breathing is a vital <coughs> ingredient for creating an exciting life. You know, several times during the day we can catch ourselves consciously, maybe getting a little uptight, feeling a little stressed. Take that opportunity and take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and let it out slowly. It helps dissipate the heaviness of life. Number four, practice optimism. Practice optimism. You know, optimism supports us in being enthusiastic and excited about life. If we're not known to be optimistic, if people don't see us as an optimistic person, you don't have to worry about that. Why? Because if it's important to you, we can learn to be optimistic. We can get, you know, unity does a lot of affirmations, true. And so we can find statements and affirmations that support us being optimistic. Things didn't go well today, but I know there's a lot to be learned from. So I'm keeping my head. Or with God, this thing's going to work out. I don't know how. I can't see the solution right now. But I know with God everything's possible. So things are going to work out. It's an optimistic attitude. Number five, choose joy. You know, we sing a congregation that says, I choose joy. It's such a simple statement. Why not choose joy? We can choose lots of things. We can choose glum, depressed, sad. We can choose all those things if we, if we want to. Why not choose joy? It's a starting point to make a conscious decision that we're tired of working on our lives and working on our problems. You've probably heard that term before. I'm, I'm working on this, really. <laughs> but you know you're working on it. How about if we just, instead of working on it, we just made a decision. We just said, you know what? Today, I'm choosing to be joyful. I know I got this stuff to deal with, but today, I'm choosing joy. That's what I want to experience today. Now, how do we do that? We can go back to the affirmative statements, our affirmations. We can appreciate and thank God for the love and beauty that we already have in our lives. You know, you, you and me and all of us here have been given the opportunity to participate in life. Isn't that something to be joyful about? I would think. What's the alternative? <laughs> yeah. We can be happy about that. We can be joyful about that. And when we're working on our joy, choose to keep your commitment to yourself. When you decide that you're going to do something to 
change your attitude, to enhance the aliveness in your life, keep those agreements. No one will but you, but you are especially one of them. Value your own efforts. Last, but not least, follow your bliss. Follow your bliss. Over 20 years ago, this American mystic by the name of Joseph Campbell. How many have heard of Joseph Campbell? Yeah. If you don't know about Joseph Campbell, get out the book. It's worth, worth knowing Joseph. He said, follow your bliss. And I believe, as it turns out, he was right. We need to be following our bliss. I mean, what's our choice? Do stuff all of our lives we don't want to do? <laughs> follow our bliss. Our instincts are going to lead us to choose actions that, that make us feel happy, both now and in the long run. For example, let's say that right now in this present moment, or maybe when you're thinking, what am I going to do on the way home today? You could stop and get yourself a blissful chocolate sundae. <laughs> That'd be one thing. But Sundays, like so many other things, don't last. They don't last. And so, why not follow that bliss that isn't out there in the form of a child on Sunday? It's in here. It's that yearning. It's that calling that's calling out to you to live a life that is a blessing. Not just to you, but to everyone. And when your life's a blessing, believe me, you're going to be excited. <coughs> They go in the <coughs> Excitement isn't something that we have to go out and get. Excitement is a, it's a choice. We choose it and allow it to bubble up from within us. It's something that we see as a possibility. And when, knowing, when we know it's a possibility, then we can look for ways to allow that to happen. <coughs> Our purpose in life isn't about arriving at a destination where we find inspiration and feel enthusiastic. It's not about out there. Just as the purpose for dancing isn't to end up in a particular spot on the floor, <laughs> the purpose of dancing and of life is to enjoy every moment and every step, regardless of where we are and where it takes us. And it doesn't really matter where we are when the music is. When the, when the music ends, because we've had a great dance. I guess the real question to ask ourselves today is, how much passion, how much enthusiasm do we have in our lives? And would you like more? Is this something that appeals to you, that calls out to you? Because I believe it's possible to feel, to feel passionate and enthusiastic throughout the day. And as Charles Filmer says, to fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm. And when we have that kind of exciting life experience, our days become a lot more fun. A lot more fun. We don't have to just endure the old daily grind. Passion and enthusiasm, I believe, are holy things. They're holy. They are the life force through which God works and moves through us and animates what we do. Excitement is a form of guidance from God. Let's follow it. It's the universe's way of putting us in the right place at the right time, in the right situation with the right people. That's what I think we attract to us when we can get excited about life. And so, to live an enthusiastic life, we must be willing to speak our truth and take whatever steps we need to take. It doesn't necessarily mean we need to leave a person or leave a situation or get a new job. It might. I don't know. But often it means just approaching the situation from a new perspective, a new way of seeing things and make the changes that we need so that we can upgrade, so that we can update our level of joy. You know, the purpose of life isn't to arrive safely at death. I don't think that's enough. You know, to live, and to live life enthusiastically, not merely survive. And I think right now, right now, 
Now this, this is a good time. It's a good time to let our passion take over. To let our enthusiasm become a part of our lives. As Mark Twain once said, let's endeavor to live so that we, when we come to die, even the undertaking will be sung.